We are coming today from a familiar story. If you have been in your Bible, some portion of your life, you've heard many a parable, many a miracle, many a story uh, in the Word of God. And today we're going to be no different talking about who Jesus is and how awesome he is. Come on, say amen, church. coming today from the book of Luke chapter 17 verses 11 through 19. Luke chapter 17 verses 11 through 19 and you see it there on the screen so you you'll probably see where we are going if you've found it uh, say hallelujah if you're still looking say help me Jesus there you go you can call his name we're in his house Luke chapter 17 and verses 11 through 19 we will read this i will read it in your hearing and because the word of god is the authority in our lives let's stand in reverence to it as we read it once a one once again thank all of you uh guests and family who are joining us from the basketball relove i mean uh, relove basketball league it's been an honor and a pleasure privilege to be hanging out with your children i know my uh, volunteer staff and those who are here I want to thank you as well for coming out week after week to share the love of Christ with these awesome children in the form of some social uh, good fun. Luke chapter 17 and verses 11 through 19 are our foundation for our message today. And it reads, Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him there. Verse 13, and they called out with a loud voice. If we could just switch that slide, I'm, I'm sure they'll get to it. Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, this is what he said. He said, go. Show yourself to the priests. And as they went, the Bible says, what did it say? They were cleansed. Verse 15. One of them. Mm -hmm, one of them. When he saw it, that he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And then Luke has some nerve, throws on to the end of this verse, and he was a Samaritan. Verse 17, Jesus asked, did I not cleanse the whole church? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God? And look, look at God, look at Jesus cursing. Except this foreigner, my Lord. Then he said to him, verse 19, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Pray with me and for me as we talk for just a few moments under the title that I'm putting in your spirit. Keep coming back keep coming back let's pray father god i stretch my hands to thee and no other help i know lord for if today O oh lord you would remove yourself from me all of who i am would fall to the ground as a sounding brass and a sinkling uh, tinkling cymbal father but yet O oh lord you still crown me with your glory you still wake me up every morning. You still bless me with your word. And all I have is thank you, Lord. So now, Lord, consider their hearts and enable your servant to speak your word boldly. Stretch out your hand to perform great signs and wonders through your holy name, through Jesus' name. Let the whole church say amen and amen. You may take your seat. The story opens up with Jesus, the Bible says, 
walking between Samaria and Galilee, going to Jerusalem. And there are 10 men who are lepers who see him and stand at a distance, the Bible says, and call out with a loud voice, Master, have pity on us. I believe that it's probably the fact that they had heard that he could do such things. But I don't know if they were at Relove over the summer when we dealt with desperation and diseases and how Christ would even break some laws to heal you. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure they were here when we had this series on the idea that these 10 lepers didn't have to stand outside the city to be blessed by Jesus. They could have actually gone into the city to find Jesus and he would have, he would have, he would have healed them. Mm hmm we talked about how desperation uh, causes uh, uh, the heart of Christ to be moved and even divinity uh, uh, changes things so that if you and I are desperate for a move of God, God will do things and sometimes the impossible for us. But here we have 10 obedient lepers to the cleansing responsibilities that the laws of Moses suggest that they should have. Uh, uh, Adriel, they are outside the city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Zayden, they're, they're outside of Samaria. They're outside of Galilee. Santos, they are outside the place that, uh, that where everybody would be and the Bible is pleased with their actions. I don't know about you, but I, as I was reading this particular story earlier this week, I said to myself, I'm going to try to read it with fresh eyes as if I've never read it before. And I had a problem with this particular story. And my story, Joan, was this. Jesus sees them. They're outside. They're where they're supposed to be. And when he sees them and they ask God to have pity on them, Mason, what ends up happening is that God says, hey, okay, cool. You're in the right place where you should be. Go show yourself to the priest. I didn't have any real problems with that, Carol. It's all right with me. They were obedient. They say, we're going to go show ourselves to the priest. Uh, Winston, all of a sudden, their faith caused them to be healed. The Bible says as they were going, I still don't have a problem. I think we in the church today would agree. Eddie, their faith reached out. God said, cool, go show yourself to the priests. I would like to suggest to the listening air, Myron, that there were nine obedient, clean lepers and one disobedient leper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah be, be, because the word says, Jesus told them, go show yourself to the priest. And as they were going, uh, see, because, because if, if we are a rule following Jesus listening people, did he not say, go show yourself to the priest? Um, Looking at these guys and I'm wondering to myself, why is the Lord so, uh, well, I can't even say that he was upset with them because he really wasn't upset with them. He was just like, where are the rest of them? I, I, okay. I would have failed the test. Anybody else out there with me? Come on. We read it with fresh eyes now, guys. We looked at it. Me and you, it's just me and you, baby girls. Just me and you. We, we're the only ones who are going to fail. The Lord said, did you not hear the Lord? I did not just read it. Go show yourself to the priests. And when they go to show themselves to the priest, Jackie, on their way, they are healed. There's, uh, listen, man, I, I, I want, my mind's imagination has to say that as they were going there, there had to be some excitement in that walk that all of a sudden their, their skin started to grow back in the right place and all of a sudden things that were broken off started to come back. All of a sudden, uh, um, fixed parts of their face and their body began to come back together again. Listen, I, I, I need to tell the church that that walk to see the priests on that particular day probably had some excitement and some joy inside of it because those nine lepers who were going, I promise you they were thinking to themselves, we 
are doing exactly what Jesus told us to do and that other one who fell off, who's not here with us, that other one who didn't come and do exactly what Jesus said do, well, love, we didn't expect him to do what Jesus said do anyway because he was a Samaritan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not, we're not going to expect that that particular guy uh, to do what Jesus said do because he'd been in the church. His, he, well, he, he, just, he just got to the church, so we don't even, you know, he, he don't know what it means to have to follow the Lord. You know, we'll, we'll say verses like obedience is better than sacrifice. Well, we'll, uh, I'm, oh, Lord, give me, give me the name of that hymn right now. It's not in my notes, Lord, but you can bless me with it. Um, Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. And there were nine lepers trusting and obeying, going to show themselves to the priests. Got there to the priest, and I'm pretty sure, like any good Christian, they say, hey, priest, check us out. Because the, the Bible says in Leviticus that once we get healed, Trina, we got to go show ourselves to you. And Jesus is fulfilling the law of what Leviticus says, and he sent us over to you. And we were coming. We lost one on the way, but don't mind him. He's a Samaritan. He, you probably wouldn't have wanted to hang out with him anyway. As I read this particular thing, I say to myself, okay, now, here we are, there are nine going, they're all excited, they're having a good time. This one is coming back. And it's possible for me, because, because sometimes God is past finding out. Sometimes the mystery in who Jesus is, is not easy to put your finger on. Anybody following me today? Sometimes to get, to, to get God to do what you want him to do or what you need for him to do, it doesn't exactly make sense right away. You and I know that you can be a vegetarian, you can be good all your life and still die before your time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You and I know that you can come to church and, and see the best saints in the building go to jail for something you didn't expect them to go to jail for. You and I both know that goodness uh, 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 that we see other people doing doesn't exactly mean that they will be in heaven. I promise you. Stick with me now. I'm making a quick turn in this. I promise you when, when, when the clouds roll back and we go to heaven, when the roll is called up yonder, we'll be there. Stephen is going to be really surprised. Mm -hmm. You remember Deacon Stephen? Got stoned by Saul. Saul going to be in heaven. He's going to be blown away. What in the world? What have I been preaching? What have I been talking about, Jesus? Why, why in the world? And he's going to say, Jesus is going to say, I mean, he's he, he going to go to Jesus. Jesus, why you got Saul in here? Jesus is going to say, where, where is he? I, I don't see Saul. He said, oh, 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 that man, we killed him a long time ago. On the road to Damascus. You, you, oh, yeah, you weren't there. But, but, but we, we got this other guy, his name Paul. And he a bad mamma jamma. Let me tell you about him. In fact, scoot over. He will sit right next to you. Because understanding how Jesus begins to move and how Jesus does things, let me tell you something. It's not for you and I to be able to say that we've got the formula on Jesus and so we can be able to do what we believe, we think, and kind of know that he's going to do. I need you to fully understand. Jesus is not trying to make sure, hear me clearly now, that you and I can predict him. No. He don't want us to follow just based on a formula. Mm -hmm. He wants us to follow based on a relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I want to, I really got to believe 
that those nine lepers who we would have to just say that they were all Jews, you know, they, they were all Jews. Let me, let me make it clear for the people in the room who probably don't understand this particular part of the story. The, the fact that the Bible says that these, that these people were between Samaria and Galilee lets us understand that that crowd of lepers could have been a blended crowd of lepers from Galilee and from Samaria. And so what that definitely meant was that the people in Galilee were Jews and the people in Samaria were Samaritans. And, and, and we come to understand after reading the word of God that Samaritans uh, and, uh, uh, and Jews, yeah, they were like the Jets and the Sharks. Okay, that was too far of a reference. They were like the New York Giants and Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, yeah, okay, maybe, let me, let me get, who's San Francisco's arch enemy? Well, Seattle, there we go. They were like the Niners and the Seahawks. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when they got together, they only were together just because they had leprosy. Can I tell you something else about the church sometimes? Let's mess with these nine lepers just a little bit more. Just, just, just can, we, can we mess with them just a little bit? Y'all fine with that? Let's mess with them some more. Could it be, Winston, think with me, please, that it is possible, Alicia, that those nine lepers, they didn't make that other one leper feel comfortable once they got healed. And start to realize he walks like a Samaritan, looks like a Samaritan. He, we can't be caught hanging out with him. I'd like to possibly suggest just for the thought and discussion in the message today that it is very possible that they said, hey, bro, <laughs> I mean, misery does love company, but we ain't in misery no more, sir. <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you can't come to the priest with us. He said, oh, bruh, no. <laughs> Ooh, can, can, can we, can I, Eddie, can I meddle some more? I'm gonna just, I'm gonna meddle a little bit, a little bit more. Yeah. Part of the cleanliness responsibilities of being a Jew means that you didn't mess with an outsider. So it is very possible, Frederica, that those Jews did say to him, Myron, uh, Myron, bro, you really can't listen, man. Because if we go to the priest with you, he going to tell us we still unclean. Mm -hmm. if, if, if I show up with you and I come to the priest looking for because, because, so can I drive it home a little bit more, Sabrina? Let me, let me, can I, I'm going to turn it a little bit more. Because all those nine, I don't know how long they've been outside their house, but they've been missing their mommy and their daddy their whole time. They've been out there. They've been outside. They can't hang out with anybody else. So they missing mom and dad. They not getting an opportunity to get with them. And so I can imagine the desperation that wells up inside of them. And they're thinking to themselves, I've been out the city this whole time. I've been quarantined this whole time. I want a chance to see my parents. I want a chance to see my wife, my husband, whoever it may be. If it is you that's going to stop me, a good Christian will say, I can't hang out with you. You smoke weed. I'm leaving. A good Christian going to roll up on that particular situation and say, my actions might kick me out of heaven. And if hanging with you is going to cause me to be kicked out of heaven, then I'm not going to go. But you, I told you, I, I, I saw, have I convinced you yet? Have you seen nine obedient lepers? I've, I've seen them. I've seen nine obedient lepers in this particular text. And, and I'm saying to myself, if I'm a good Christian, I'm a good re-love saint. I'm saying to myself, hey, yo, those are our people. They can be leaders in the church. They can be great because when the Lord speaks, they listen. Because they follow the word of God all the way because they do what God asked them to do. And this one guy, the Bible says, he turns around. I'm gonna tell you why I'm able to do all this imagination with this because Luke doesn't tell us what caused him to turn around. He just tells us that he turned around. 
He turns around, he comes back to God, and, and, and Luke begins talking about him. And I love the fact that Luke wants to elevate this guy because I promise you, if it were, an, if it were another one of those writers, they probably would have just put this part out of there because they were Jews. And they were really trying to make sure that we always did what Jesus told us to do. You needed one, 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 you, you needed one re-loved church in all the rest of the other churches. Just come, just, just plug in my own church real bad, you know. You needed one church, just one person who was just willing to just love Jesus so much that realized that, that, that watch this, that if my love is in the right place for Christ, my actions aren't what you look at. Oh, preacher, you messing up. Sometimes the love of God will have you going a bit contrary to everyone else around you and things that you thought you should be able to do. Listen to me clearly. This Samaritan is coming by. He's going back to Jesus. He's, he's breaking all the rules now. Because if you remember the woman at the well, who was she? A Samaritan. And a Jew comes to her and says, hey, can I have some water? And she's like, if you knew who it was you was talking to, you would leave. So Samaritans know we can't really be hanging out with Jews, but this one, this one decides to come back. I really want to ask this question. Why is he coming back? Why is he coming back? when the representatives of who Jesus said that he was around, the representatives who, who said, hey, I love Jesus, I'm a spokesman for Jesus, I'm a Christian, kicked him out of their group. Why is he coming back? I'd like to suggest to you this one thing. He, he, he's coming back. Stick with me, church. Because what was broken inside of him is no longer broken because of what Jesus said. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, he's coming back because the leprosy stopped leprosying. Well, well, he could have went back to the priest for that. I heard a critic in my mind saying that they could have told him that you've been clean, but no, 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 listen, listen to me clearly. The priest told him to go outside the city because you're dirty. Because you, you quarantine, because it's not working for you. Because, because, and, and, and then when Jesus told him to go to the priest, where Jesus told him to go, he started to see work happen. He started to see the move of God begin to show up on his body. He started to see God, start to see good things happening. And so when he decided that he was going to make a change in who he was going to, we've already decided he probably got kicked out. He probably got, uh, uh, he, he probably realized I can't hang out with these guys. But he starts to come back, listen to me clearly, because the weapons of his warfare stopped working. Thought I'd get an Amen. So let me, let, me, let, me, let me fix it. When Jesus begins to change things in our lives, some of the things that used to mess with you stop messing with you once Jesus declares a change in your life. And all of a sudden, Jesus says, go. He starts going. He sees his healing. And the weapon that was causing him problems stops causing him problems. He's got to come back. Mm-hmm. He's got to turn around and say, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't know where those kids, those other nine, went to kindergarten at. Nobody told them to say thank you. I got to go back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's looking at this thing and he's saying, hey, listen, man, before I met you, Jesus, I was broken. Now that I met you, Jesus, I'm healed. I, I, I think I should go back and say thank you. I wondered to myself, why is he coming back? Listen, listen, he's coming back because his, his COVID stopped COVIDing. Mm-hmm. His pandemic stopped. Mm-hmm. His cancer rolled away. His, his ailment stopped. The, the enemies that were chasing after him, they were messing with him, they, they just stopped. They, 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 they sat back because Jesus began to make a change in his life. I wonder if there's a witness in the building today that can say, I came back to Jesus to say thank you because he began to make a change in my life. 
He began to turn things around for me. I began to see that God is doing something special for me. I'm going to ask the question one more time of this leper. Leper, why did you come back? Why did you come back? I'd like to suggest to the listening ear today that the leper began to come back because he realized where his help came from. And that his help did not come from the adherence to man-made rules so that he could be clean. But his help came from the Lord. David jumps out in the psalm and says, I, 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 I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. I, I have a problem with that particular psalm because it doesn't add the conjunction but at the end of looking to the hills from whence cometh my help. I'd like to suggest to all of us today listening inside of here that there are many of us looking to the hills for our help as if that's where our help comes from. I need you to understand it's not in a man-made creed. It's not in some hymns. It's not in some CCM music. It's in the word of God. And when he says, I've got help for you, you have to believe that Jesus is where our help comes from. I want to suggest to you today and hope that you fully understand that this man realized I didn't get help from the priest last time I went to him. So I got to go to Jesus this time because when he sent me, I saw my healing. I need you to know today that on your going, doing what Jesus is telling you to do, you're going to see your healing. You're going to see your deliverance. You're going to see your redemption. You're going to see your move of God. When you move as God says move, but if you move like man says move, Mm. No, I get it. I get it. I get it. The priests were supposed to represent Christ and they were supposed to help keep the people clean. And Jesus did tell him to go see the priests. But there's something that happens to the heart that wants to produce thankfulness and gratitude. Mm -hmm. There's something that shows up inside of the person who wants to say to somebody else, I appreciate you. I thank you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in gratitude for the actions that you've done for me. I, I, I even bet to say that this leper coming back surprised even Jesus himself. And he probably wanted to ask that guy because he did. He said, where are the other nine? That question to me probably says you couldn't convince them to come. I don't, I don't know. Sorry, cameraman, I know I'm moving out of my box. But it really wasn't on him to convince. Let me share something with you. That when the thought of gratitude comes over your spirit to be able to share a thanks with somebody else, do it before the devil gets in the way. I need you to understand, thankful hearts are healthy hearts. Thankful hearts are healed hearts. That's, that's what it just showed us. That's what the Bible just showed us. This man comes back. He is the one who not just gets healed, but the Bible says he also gets saved. He gets a physical healing and a spiritual salvation just because he comes back to Jesus. And if he would allow something to get in his way of saying thank you, he probably would not have gotten it. So I'd ask you the question this morning, when was the last time you told Jesus a real good thanks and not just some platitudes of thank you? When was the last time you shared with your loved one, hey, I appreciate you, that you thought for a moment, let me sit down, put pen to paper real quick. I'm trying to give you some practical things to do to build some of your relationship uh, and just actually say, hey, listen, man, listen, listen, I appreciate you. You, you. Man, listen, listen, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be, you know, <laughs> for real. That you actually sat back and changed your path. This man changed his direction to walk back to God, to Jesus, and say, hey, listen, I need you to understand. Those guys don't like me, but you seem to like me. You healed me, and all I want to say is thank you. All I want to say is I appreciate you, Jesus. Jaden, all he wanted to say to him was like, listen, man, listen, listen, listen. Those guys don't like me, Jesus, but you, you know what I'm saying? I saw love in your eyes. I saw care in your voice. I saw an opportunity to, to, to be blessed by you. And so I came. 
I came back so I could say thank you. I want to ask you, what stopped you from coming back to tell Jesus thank you this week? What stopped you from living a life that says thank you? Is it your ailment? Is it your disease? Is it your frustrations with life? I need you to fully understand. Those things are nothing when you bring them to God. Because you'll come to him and you'll say, Lord, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. And he'll say, I'm about to save you. I'm about to bless you. And then he'll bless you. Harvard Institute of Health, I'm going to read what they say about health, about thanks. It said, in positive psychology research, gratitude is strongly and consistently associated with greater happiness. Gratitude helps people feel more positive. When you relish good experiences, it improves one's health. Notice I said relish. We live in a world where things come at us so fast we don't really get an opportunity to sit down and really figure out how good they are. I promise you the next time you're upset at your spouse or your children, stop for a moment. Breathe. And begin to think about how good they are. And how kind they have been. No, I'm not talking about in the moment right now where you're upset with them because they probably did something that pissed you off, you know. If they, probably, they probably messed you up. Like, if, you, 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 if you're in my house, Sister McBride probably called me and asked me to warm up the food and I just got busy and I didn't warm up the food. I, I, can get, I, I can get myself in a myriad of troubles just because I agreed to do something and didn't do it. And I need to, I, man, I want to lift my voice and say thank you to Sister McBride for still putting up with me. I can be very hard-headed. I, I, can, I can mess up so many. Myron, you know, you, you know you, married men, I'm talking to y'all. We, we, can, we can cause problems real fast. Real fast. Be, be, because, because, Winston, because Winston, sometimes we get angry real quick. And we just, we, 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 we might fly off the handle real fast. I ain't, I'm, you know, we, we, ain't, we ain't throwing nothing. We ain't hitting nothing. We, but we, we, we may let frustration speak faster. And the Lord has blessed me with a kind spirit. It's not mine. I, he's blessed me with a kind spirit. Hallelujah. That when I'm messing up and I'm acting a fool, she just be walking in there. And, and she, she's the most comical person in the house. I don't have as much comedy as she does. She, she be just laughing at me and I be getting offended even more. It would be like I messed up and now I'm offended that she's laughing at me. When was the last time you came back to your to your husband and said, and I, stick with me, we, we're still going somewhere, and said, I'm sorry, ladies. Social media makes it like a fun joke that ladies don't say sorry. They just find another reason to, uh, um, what's that word Jada Pinkett used? Entanglement. Yeah, they just find another way. They skirt around it. When was the last time you really said, hey, honey, I, I, I messed up? And then when you do that, those of us who receive those kinds of things, I need you to fully understand. Rebuke any busyness of the devil or life that wants to get in the way of you saying thank you. Because when a person is accountable for their actions and they show up to say, hey, I'm accountable for my actions, you fix the issue when you say thank you. 
but God extends himself and he does the biggest things for you and the most awesome thing for you and he shows up when no one thinks that he would show up and he shows up when the doctors say that no one else can show up. When God makes a way out of no way, it is imperative that the Christian out of a love relationship with God, that's the word, love relationship with God, not out of duty, but a love relationship with God, not out because the Bible says so, but because of a love relationship with God, you turn around and you say, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. It could have been me with no shoes and no clothes and no home and no job and no health, but you didn't see fit to let none of these things be. So every day by your goodness, you keep on, keep on blessing me. Lord, I want to say thank you. Is that you out there today? You want to lift up a hand of thanks this morning. You want to say, Lord, it's me saying thank you today, Jesus. I lift my hand in gratitude to you this evening, Father. I lift my hand in thanks to you, Father. You've been blessing my family a long time. You've been opening doors for me. Listen, one of the biggest things that God can do is forgive you, and he went to a cross, a cruel cross just for that. You want to lift both hands this morning and say, Father, thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for dying for me bearing all my guilt and shame and love you came God and gave amazing grace father the hands are raised in the building today God as I close this message we're saying thank you father you showed us here we can't figure you out Lord but when you show up I bet, Lord, that a thank you to who you are doesn't mess up our obedience with you. God, help us to love you in such a way, Lord, that when it seems as if we're disobedient, our love has cleared the way for our actions. That when it seems like, oh Lord, that we're like those nine <laughs> who are not coming back, I pray, Lord, that the love that we have for you, you'll be able to speak to us and say, hey, hey, before you go to church, go say thank you. Before you honor the Sabbath, go say thank you. Help us, Jesus. Before you follow the 10, say thank you. Because Lord, it's that love relationship for you. Admittance into your kingdom, heaven, Father, with you is going to be based on some relational words. You're going to say, welcome into your kingdom. And it's all going to be because we knew you. And Father, when you say to those who want to go to heaven that they can't come in, you're going to tell them, depart from me because I never knew you. So I pray, Father, that the love that we have would supersede our rightness. It would supersede our works and that it would show up in gratitude. Your name will forever get the glory here, Father. If there's someone today, Father, that needs to give their life to you, to turn around, Father, today, Father, and say, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior, Jesus. I'm going to ask, Father, that that person would stand right now, Father. If there's someone in the building today, Father, that needs to say, Lord, you are my everything, and I'm giving my life to you. God, I pray that they stand right now and they make a change in their lives for you. Help them to turn around and come back and say, thank you, Father. Lord, seal the decisions that these individuals are making today, Father. Our hands of gratitude are raised high, Father. And some of us, Jesus, some of us are saying thank you in advance. Yes, Lord. Because we know, Father, you can do great things, Father. So some of us with, with prayer requests on our hearts and desires on our lips, Father, instead of right now asking you for something, Father, we're just saying by faith, thank you, Father. 
for answering, for healing, for delivering. Because God, if you could do it for Jerry, you could do it for us. If you could do it in the Bible, Jesus, you could do it for us. And all we have to say is thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise in the building. Come on, magnify the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.